Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, policeman killed in St. Anne. The St. Anne police are in pursuit of gunmen who fatally shot one of their colleagues and wounded a woman in the parish on Monday evening. The deceased cop has been identified as Constable Ricardo Fairclaw. It is reported that sometime after 8 o'clock, Constable Fairclaw intervened in a shooting on Bravo Street in the proximity to the police station in St. Anne's Bay and was shot by the hoodlums. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The gunman escaped. The police federation has expressed the sadness at the constable's passing. Paul Patmore to represent a PNP in South Trelawney. Entrepreneur Paul Patmore of Low River in Trelawney is set to represent the People's National Party in the constituency of South Trelawney in the next general election. I have been active in the constituency prior to the local government election, and I have since stepped up my work in meeting the constituents, Patmore said. Between 2004 and 2008, Patmore was an independent councillor in the Trelawney Municipal Corporation. He gave the following reason for his sabbatical since 2008. My organic gold fertilizer needed a lot of time to get it fully established. Now it is ready and going and I have time to further serve the people of South Trelawney. As fate would have it, there is no member of parliament for the area. Remember, Marisa Dalrymple Philibert resigned in September 2023. I have to prepare just in case there is a by-election. I don't want to be caught asleep, said Pat Moore. A funeral home director, who is promoting the use of mausoleum for burials, expressed a confidence in winning at the polls, which are due next year. The choice of a Devon McDaniel as a Jamaica Labour Party candidate makes my attempt easier, declared Pat Moore. Teacher shot in home attack A teacher has been hospitalized with her chest and upper left side wounds after gunmen smashed open a window to her St. Andrew home and opened fire in the wee hours of Sunday morning. The incident occurred sometime after 3 a.m. in a section of Lawrence Tavern St. Andrew called a burnt shop. Investigators have theorized that the educator, who recently moved to the area, may not have been the target of the attack. The news understands that her son, who lives at the same address, may have been the target. The shooting has left the farming district on edge. A resident of the community told the news that it took them by surprise. We never come out when we hear the shot name, but as soon as it was safe to do so, people gather up and we hear some mumbling. It not really she them go far. Anybody in the house could have got shot and died. Luckily, that was not the case. But she must afraid now like we, especially the elderly, a resident told the news. A source close to the investigation corroborated what some residents were saying. I never see them go for, but the teacher's son hear the dog a bark and gone outside gone look. When him go, somebody grab off for him and him run back inside. Then the gunman them go run at the back window and broke in the window and shoot up inside. As so come the lady get shot. The anonymous source said. A senior investigator told the news that the police are following all leads and are seeking to restore calm to the community. Between January 1 and April 13 this year, St. Andrew North Police Division recorded 21 shootings. This represents a 31% year-on-year increase or five more shootings than seen in the corresponding period in 2023. Where injuries are concerned, there were 16 cases three more than the corresponding period last year. In the murder column, the division recorded 13, which is a decline of 7% or one fewer year on year. The national murder toll now stands at 311. Second person to drown in Portland in a week. A boy from Port Antonio drowned at the renowned Blue Lagoon around 4.30 p.m. on Monday afternoon. This marks the second drowning in a week within the parish. Last Tuesday, a second-year student of the College of Agriculture, Science and Education drowned at one of the institution's beaches. The news understands that the deceased, whose name has not been released, went to the lagoon with some friends when he encountered difficulty while swimming. His body was later retrieved from the Alligator Head Foundation by divers. Concerns have been raised regarding the response time of the police with some individuals 
claiming that they arrived at the scene of the incident long after being summoned. 14 homeless have fallen burning to lane at Blaze. Four children are among some 14 individuals left homeless following a fire at a Barnett Lane in Montego Bay, St. James on Monday night. The fire of unknown origin gutted sections of a building that served as a commercial area for a bar downstairs while the residential space was housed upstairs. Ten adults and four children are among those affected. One of the children attends high school, the other primary school, while the other two are said to be too small to attend the school at the moment. No injuries have so far been reported, but one woman was said to have fainted following the ordeal. Among those rendered homeless is Anthony Soli, a hotel worker, who said he was asleep at the time of the blaze. I was sleeping then the smoke woke me up, he remarked. Quaker thinking saw him grab a towel to cover his face while exiting the building, but not before alerting several neighbors to the situation and guiding them outside. He said he only managed to save a short pants under the towel. Everything else was destroyed in the blaze. He looked on forlorn as the firefighters worked to extinguish the flames. I lose everything. Clothes, my bird paper, my passport, everything, he lamented. It was a similar case for John Flowers. I lose everything. Nothing no save, he said. His furniture and the bedding were all destroyed. He shared how he managed to make his exit when the fire started. I had to go through a window because where the fire reached, I couldn't go through the door because of how it stayed, he said. The fire reportedly started just before 8 p.m. The fire department is yet to figure out what started the blaze. Two teams from the St. James Fire Brigade managed to extinguish the fire, preventing it from spreading to adjoining buildings. This latest development follows a hectic weekend for firefighters in St. James as the fire department dealt with several incidents between Sunday and Monday morning. There were two fires in the old shoe market in the early hours of Sunday and Monday morning, resulting in the destruction of three shops. There was also a fire along Gravel Lane, just a meters from the latest blaze, where three buildings were affected. A number of appliances, including refrigerators, stoves and washers, were destroyed, resulting in millions of dollars in losses. Man fatally shot by licensed firearm holder in St. James A man who reportedly shot and injured another man was later fatally shot after he was challenged by a licensed firearm holder in St. James on Sunday afternoon. The deceased has been identified as 22-year-old Brandon Campbell of a St. James address. It is alleged that about 5.15 p.m. on Pega Road, Campbell alighted from a great Toyota Axio and opened fire at the man. A licensed firearm holder, who was nearby at the time of the incident, reportedly challenged Campbell, who was shot in the process. The car from which Campbell earlier alighted reportedly sped away from the scene. An illegal firearm was reportedly seized at the scene. Both the injured men were taken to hospital, where Campbell was pronounced dead and the other man admitted for treatment. The St. James police are investigating. Domestic-related murders spike in St. Anne Senior Superintendent Dwight Powell, head of the St. Anne Police, says that there has been a recent spike in domestic-related murders in the parish and that this has contributed to the overall surge in murders in the division so far this year. According to St. Anne residents at a function on the weekend, SSP Powell expressed a concern that too many domestic conflicts are ending in deadly violence. So, since the start of this year, we have seen some 21 murders being committed in St. Anne. And we are already at day number 11 in the fourth month of the year. So, it means that we are trending over five murders per month since the start of this year, which is not good for the Garden Parish of St. Anne. So, 21 murders when compared to 19 last year. We are seeing the vast number of our murders in St. Anne being attributed to conflict, domestic related situation. Uh, so for all the 11 police jurisdictions that we have in St. Anne, all the heroes are plagued and affected by conflict, domestic violence situation.
a few of the incidents that we have been getting in recent time coming from a community uh, situation where people are not settling their dispute. And of course, we are aware, ladies and gentlemen, that when um, people take other people's property, especially cattle, it will cause severe challenge. But again, we want to use the opportunity to say to the disputing communities, please do not take the law in your, in your own hand. Do not resort to crime and violence. Leave the policing to us, the official. We will police with, uh, with purpose.